every developer, web developer, software developer, full stack developer, full stack engineer, software engineer, whatever made up title you want to assign yourself. I think that all programmers need to have a portfolio. And I do have to keep repeating myself and spreading awareness about this stuff because I have all of these younger beginner programmers reaching out to me, wondering why they can't land interviews when they've only applied to 10 jobs. They don't have any social media. They don't have a portfolio. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about why every single single one of you should have a portfolio, what you should include and shouldn't include in the portfolio. And then I'm going to show you how to make it and host it online easily. And before we get into it, I do want to mention one of the best platforms you can use to host your portfolio, which we'll be using later in the video at the end when we deploy our portfolio site, which of course is Hostinger. Hostinger is a repeat sponsor of this channel, and it is one of the best hosting options out there. And I do genuinely believe that for a couple of reasons, one of which is the user interface, which makes it incredibly easy to do everything hosting related. And then the other reason, of course, just being value for the price you pay for premium web hosting on Hostinger you're getting just so much more benefits than you're going to find in other places. I remember back in the day, just registering a domain and getting an email associated with that domain was actually pretty expensive. And with the premium plan on Hostinger, those are just two of the like 100 benefits that you get that come with the premium web hosting. So I can't recommend it enough. And if you're going to use Hostinger, make sure to go into the description and use my link and then use code Nick White at checkout because you'll get an additional 10% off your order. They've got several plan options. I'd recommend the 48 month one because the price of renewal is the lowest when you pick that plan you also get three months free and this is one of those things where there's no risk involved because they've got the 30 day money back guarantee so once again if you're interested go into the description click that link and make sure you put code nick white at checkout you'll get an additional 10 percent off all right now let's move on to why you need a portfolio so no matter what field you're in or what you currently do all of you should have a portfolio. And I'm not even talking about just programmers. If you're a designer, if you're a photographer, heck, if you paint houses, everybody should have a portfolio. We live in a digital age where people want to research before they make an investment. They wanna be able to look you up to see your prior work and past accomplishments so that they can feel confident and safe in making the decision to hire you. And while a couple decades ago, making a website for yourself or your business might've seemed a little bit excessive or over the top, now Nowadays, it's totally accepted and almost expected because nowadays there's so many resources that getting a website built for yourself is pretty easy. If you don't have the technical skills to build a website, then you can just use something like a website builder, which I'll show you how to use later in this video. But if you do have those technical skills and know how to code, building a website and hosting it nowadays is really simple. So there's really no excuse to not have a portfolio in 2023. And it might almost look bad nowadays if you don't. But nonetheless, a portfolio is a place where you could proudly show off your past work and when people go to it they can immediately start to get a sense of your skill level and a portfolio doesn't just have to be a showcase of your work it can go beyond that and I think this is extremely valuable to showcase positive characteristics and display what kind of person you are because think of the difference when people are looking to hire and they're just looking at stacks and stacks of paper resumes without a face to match to the resume but they go to your portfolio website, they check you out, and they can actually see what kind of person you are. I think this is a huge advantage in the hiring process. So there's a plethora of reasons that you should all have a portfolio. So I think now it's time to talk about creating one and what you should and shouldn't include. All right, so now that we know there's amazing benefits to having a portfolio, the next thing I want to talk about is what you should include in your portfolio and what you shouldn't. So let's just get what you shouldn't put in your portfolio out of the way right now. So one big mistake that a lot of people make with their portfolio is they include too much and when I say too much I mean they're including like everything they've ever done and while it's good to showcase your work you really want to focus on showcasing your best work not all of your work and when you make your portfolio you really want to highlight your best work so that when people go to it it's the first thing they see so if you're a programmer like me that's worked on large-scale web and mobile applications, you really don't need to be including things like to-do apps or calculator apps. If someone goes to your portfolio and sees very small amateurish things, they might get the wrong impression. And another thing people include a lot in portfolios and resumes is online tutorial or course certifications or certificates of completion. And yeah, those are cool and all, and it shows you completed a tutorial or course, but if it's not a very reputable certificate, then there's really no need to include it. I don't think people are gonna be impressed that you completed a four hour tutorial and that you have a certificate to show for it. 
And then last but not least, while I do think it's a cool little touch to include some personality in your portfolio, you definitely should be highlighting only positive characteristics about yourself. So make sure that if you're going to include anything from your personal life or link to your social media or post pictures and videos that it makes you look good. So that's pretty much it for what you shouldn't include in your portfolio. Now let's talk about what you should include. In general, I think you should include anything that's going to highlight some sort of skill that's pertaining to your field. If you have industry experience, you're gonna wanna include that. If you've done freelancing or impressive side projects, then you're gonna wanna include those. If you've done research, if you've done public speaking, if you've won awards, these are of course all impressive things that you would want to include. Now I'd recommend including pictures, links, descriptions of all of these things so that people can understand them thoroughly. And heck, maybe if you have a cool project, you can even include a demo of the project in your portfolio. There's so many cool things you could highlight to showcase your skills. And if you're a programmer trying to showcase your programming skills, you can even do it through the build and design of your portfolio. So in itself, your portfolio can even become a demonstration of your skills. Make sure it's organized and clean. But one more thing before we move on, I want to mention is that you should really consider all of the skills that people would value in someone that's working in your field, even something like soft skills, like communication. Whatever your strongest skills are, you'll want to highlight those in your portfolio and your weakest skills should remain hidden. So that's kind of the basic idea for a portfolio, but I'm sure a lot of you now want to see how they're made and put up on the web. So let's get into that. So if you're new to coding or you're not that good at it yet, there's no need to worry. You could still make your portfolio and you could do that by creating it using a website builder. And a website builder is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a tool to build a website. It's a user interface and there's no coding involved. It's basically just dragging and dropping different website components onto a page and then you hit publish and your site's built. Now, of course, there's a bunch of different website builders you can use, but in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use Hostingers, which in my opinion is one of the best. It's really easy to use and if you sign up with premium web hosting, it's just going to come as one of the many features that you get with premium web hosting. So if you go into the description and you click that link and you sign up for the premium web hosting, make sure you use code Nick White at checkout. By the way, you'll get an additional 10% off. You'll be able to use the website builder to build your portfolio. And don't worry, all website builders are very similar in concept and functionality. So what you learn here would translate anywhere else. So if we head over to hostinger.com, if you signed up for premium web hosting, you're going to go to the website section and you will create a new website for your portfolio and you'll select create a new website of course and you'll be able to select between the hosting or website builder you could code it from scratch you'd select this or you could use wordpress in this case i'm going over the website builder first then you're going to need a domain for your portfolio and for this, I recommend if you have a brand name, then you could choose that. But otherwise, just go with your name.com if that's available. So you'll select buy a domain. And for me, I'm nickwhite.com. I've been trying to get this for years. But unfortunately, if we go to nickwhite.com, it's not going to be available because some real estate people own it and they want $10,000 for it. But it's all good, guys. I got nickwhite.com. My middle initial is W. So that's basically my name. You know, I'm coping, I guess. But... If you go to edit website, this is where you'll be taken to the website builder. Now, in my opinion, the website builder is extremely intuitive. You could edit the site easily just by selecting different things and it gives you instructions. If you're confused, you could use the start guide and it'll tell you how to use it, but it's pretty straightforward. Up in the top right, you'll be able to make edits and then check them out in web and mobile versions of the site. You'll also have the options to save the site, preview it before you publish it live to your domain on the web and then of course the publish live button this of course is just one of the many template sites you could choose from and then you make edits i highly recommend going through and picking one that you like and then just editing from there you'd also have a blog for your portfolio if you'd want that and even an online store which doesn't really go with a portfolio but at least you could have it adding elements to the site and editing the site is extremely easy right you click you had edit text. There's all these different options that you would get even if you're coding, but it's just really straightforward like fonts, font sizes, bold, italic, underline, links, add elements, go to images or something, Instagram feed. I mean, look at all this stuff, video. So here's an image. And then if I want to change the image, then I go here and I upload it from my browser. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. And website builders have come a long way. They're really impressive nowadays and you can build a pretty awesome website. So if you don't know how to code that well yet, this is a perfect place to start. Mess around here. I think this is even like a good introduction to getting into web development. However, this is a programming channel. 
And I know a lot of you are very experienced. So not only would you guys wanna build your own portfolio from scratch with code because you might learn something doing it, as well as code gives you the power to do some really neat and interesting things with a portfolio site. And so now I'm going to show you how easy it would be to code a simple portfolio from scratch and then throw it up on the web. All right, so now even if you know how to code, I think the best place to start your portfolio is to pick out a bootstrap template. To choose a template, you'll just type in bootstrap templates on Google, and then you'll have a bunch of website templates you can look through. So these are all templates coded from scratch, and you will download the code for the website. So what you'll wanna do is spend some time looking through these, find one that looks like a good starter point for a portfolio. As we can see here, we have one that says stylish portfolio. So literally a portfolio, let's select it. So this will download a zip file with all of the code onto your computer. And so you'll just wanna unpack that zip file and open up the folder in your text editor choice. In this case, we'll be using Visual Studio Code. And here we'll be able to see all of the code that it comes with. And then if we open up the HTML file in our web browser, we could see that exact template that we just downloaded and this is a cool website right like this is a cool starter portfolio in my opinion and if you're not an expert at html one of the best ways to learn is to just look up the text from the actual web page you'll just search that in your html file you'll find it here and when you edit things usually they're going to update on the website so as we can see here we have the stylish portfolio h1 tag so let's say i put nick white's portfolio and if we hit save and we go back over, we can see it gets updated. Same thing with a free bootstrap theme by Start Bootstrap. Let's go back, let's find this and let's update it. A history of Nick White's work. And of course it updates. So coding your own portfolio is that easy. Find a bootstrap template, pull it down on your computer, and then make edits to the HTML. And when you're finally done coding with your portfolio, it's going to be really easy to throw up on the web and host, especially when you use Hostinger. To go get the premium plan and use code Nick White at checkout for an additional 10% off. So if we were to head back over to Hostinger and I wanted to upload my portfolio site to the domain nickwhiteyoutube.com, all I'd have to do is select manage, and then go down to file manager. And this is where you actually upload your code. So you'll select access the files of whatever your domain is. In this case, it's nickwhiteyoutube.com. It'll take you to this little area where it has a public HTML directory. And this is how easy it is to host a site on Hostinger. All you need to do is drag and drop the files from your website, like the ones we just downloaded from Bootstrap and made changes to. We just dump them into here and then our site's live. That's it takes like one minute. And trust me guys, it's not this easy on other hosting platforms. Hostinger makes it really easy. So like I said, I'm gonna drag all these files into this directory and our site should be uploaded. And so if we go to nickwhiteyoutube.com, we're gonna see that bootstrap template, which we made minimal edits to. Now I'm not gonna build an entire portfolio site out in this video because I already have one. And I took my cam off temporarily so you get a good look at this. Basically we just have a header, then we have the contents of the page, and then we have a footer with all the social medias. My header basically just has my name and some navigation. And you'll see as I navigate through the site that the contents of the middle change. For experience, I essentially hard coded my resume with logos. So it just looks a little bit cleaner than a resume in my opinion. The project section shows a lot of my impressive projects and if you hover over them you get detailed descriptions. The research section talks about different research I've done in the past and then hackathons talks about hackathon projects and also gives details. Now of course I haven't updated my portfolio in a long time but before I had a big YouTube channel this got me a lot of interviews. Instead of this just being text on a page they can actually look through and get visuals, more details, they could see what I've actually built with pictures. They could look through and see pictures of me and get a sense of what I might actually be like as a person. And all around, you're just gonna be able to fit way more information into a portfolio site than a resume, of course. So that pretty much concludes all of my thoughts on portfolios. If you don't have one, you're putting your career at a disadvantage and they're pretty easy to make, so make one. So with that being said, I appreciate every single one of you guys for watching this video. I hope some of you guys found value from it. If you did, it would be nice if you left a like or subscribe to the channel. I'm really focusing on YouTube this year, trying to put out a ton of good content. If you want to get a little bit more personal, then give me a follow on Instagram or Twitter. I've got those linked in the description every video too. I respond to DMs. I follow you guys back. I really appreciate it all of the support. Once again, I wanna thank Hostinger for sponsoring this video. Go check out that 48 month premium plan. It's totally worth it. And if you enter Nick White at checkout, 10% off. And yeah, 2023, new videos all the time. Stay tuned.
See you guys in the next one. Peace.